J.D. Vance's remarks strike a chord, painting a vivid picture of the current government's perceived incompetence and the lurking dangers of its policies. This kind of rhetoric isn't just about stirring up emotions, it's a strategic move to rally support, though it inevitably highlights the deep divisions within our political landscape. I mean, our Fox News polling does show the economy is the number one issue and that people do give you all the edge on that. And yet, this is what we have out from some new polling out of the New York Times. They say Ms. Harris is now leading Mr. Trump among likely voters in Arizona, 50 to 45, and has even edged ahead of Mr. Trump in North Carolina, a state Mr. Trump won four years ago, while narrowing his lead significantly in Georgia and Nevada. What is the administration doing, the campaign doing with that data as it comes in? I mean, these are critical states that you got to have to have a path to 270. Are there any pivots? Are there any, um, you know, reconfiguring of what you're doing in the strategy? Because you talk about your message, but is it not landing? Well, let me say two things about this, Shana. First of all, the polls tend to radically overstate Democrats. We certainly saw that uh, during the polling of summer of 2020 and summer of 2016. And of course, a lot of those polls were wrong when it came to election day. The second thing I'll say, Shannon, is what we have certainly seen is that Kamala Harris got a bit of a sugar high a couple of weeks ago. But what we've actually seen from our own internal data, Shannon, is that Kamala Harris has already leveled off. If you talk to insiders in the Kamala Harris campaign, they're very worried about where they are because the American people just don't buy the the idea that Kamala Harris, who has been vice president for three and a half years, is somehow going to tackle the inflation crisis in a way tomorrow that she hasn't for the past 1300 days. Giving Kamala Harris control over inflation policy, Shannon, it's like giving Jeffrey Epstein control over human trafficking policy. The American people are much smarter than that. They don't buy the idea that Kamala Harris represents a fresh start. She is more of the same. It is doubling down on the failed policies of the Harris administration to give Kamala Harris a promotion rather than to fire her, which is what I think most Americans are going to do on November. When Vance draws a parallel to Kamala Harris's handling of the economy, particularly her approach to inflation, it reveals a profound distrust. His extreme comparison to Jeffrey Epstein isn't merely shock value. It's a calculated attempt to underscore the gravity of the situation, suggesting that entrusting Harris with these crucial issues is not just risky, but potentially disastrous. This isn't just about policy concerns. It speaks to a broader fear that the current leadership might be fundamentally incapable or even harmful when it comes to managing key aspects of the economy, which directly impact the lives of everyday Americans. Vance's words reflect a deep unease with the direction in which the nation's leadership is heading. They serve as a dramatic warning. The wrong leadership could steer the country into catastrophe. His message taps into a collective yearning for genuine, competent, leadership, something he implies Kamala Harris sorely lacks. The starkness of his comparisons is designed to evoke a visceral reaction, playing on the public's existing fears and doubts, especially those tied to the economy. The mention of Jeffrey Epstein is particularly incendiary, designed to provoke criticism, anger, and a sense of urgency regarding Harris's capabilities. It's a lie to that this message will resonate strongly with those who are already disillusioned with the current administration and anxious about the economic future. However, there's a risk that such extreme rhetoric could backfire, alienating more moderate individuals who might view the comparison as overblown and unnecessarily divisive. 